Hey guys, in the following video, I am going to show you flow forms settings, and there are two parts to that the individual form settings and the global settings for all of your flow forms. So let's get started over at the WordPress back end, and I'm going to go back to the same form we created in the first video. So we previously created this form, and as you can see, we have multiple sections over here on the right hand side, and now we want to edit the form settings. And in this area, you have four different sections, the email section for the recipient, the email subject, the number of columns, and the confirmation message as well. So the first section recipient email, that will be the users who receive the email after it is submitted. So you will want to add your own email address here and anyone else in CC if you would like to have uh, multiple people receive this email. So for example, we want to have our flow themes email in here, which we have right now. And if I wanted to add a second one, I could also add it to with just by adding a comma and space and then adding the second email. And that will submit the form to both email addresses. Now we also have an email subject line and this will be the subject of the email when it's received. Uh, my suggestion to you would be to modify this because uh, if you're using certain email browsers, they will put all the emails together, especially in Gmail, um, if it has the same email subject. So to modify that and to make it more unique, uh, we can use the existing field values from any of these forms. So you can see here, there's a description. You can use any of the existing field values uh, by adding the field ID between uh, two percentage signs. So if we looked over here, for example, and the field ID is uh, this one at the very top. So if you click on any field uh, and then the field settings area, you can get the field ID. And then of course, if I want to use that, uh, we could do a new message from uh, Narcissi. And then of course, add the field ID around to percentage signs. And that would then of course use the name. So a new message from Narcy, the person's name. So what I would usually do is uh, a new message from the contact page, if that's what it's from. Uh, I would usually do a new message via the contact page and then from the person's name uh, and or you can include the email as well. Um, that way, it creates a more unique email. Whenever you receive it, it's not going to be bundled up as one. And uh, yeah, it makes it easier for you to check at a glance uh, who submitted the messages. Now, you also have form columns. Again, it could be one column or as we just previously had two columns where you can drag and drop the elements in here uh, to create shorter, more compact forms or of course, split the forms up a little bit. And you have the confirmation options as well. So that'll be the thank you message after they submit the form. Uh, so you can update the thank you text here. So thanks for submitting a form. You know, we reply back in X, Y, Z, ours, you know, whatever amount of time it is that you usually respond in. If you don't hear back from us, add, and then you can add your email. So you can, you know, message us via our email. That's not what is required, but some people like to add that just in case and uh, nothing comes through or they don't respond. You also have the option to redirect to a page. Now this is a great option if you're using Google Analytics or any other tool that is tracking your website and conversions. And by conversions, I mean uh, lead generation conversions. So how effectively your website is generating leads for you whenever someone gets to your contact page. So, you could set up a thank you page and then of course type in uh, thank you, whatever the page is for that. If it's available, then of course it will show up here um, and that would allow you then to of course redirect to that page. Uh, I'm gonna put it to home for now just as an example. But again, uh, you could of course, and I would suggest uh, creating a thank you page and then with that, uh, the form will redirect. So I'm gonna save that and then just show you how this redirect works as well.
agree to this and just let this update and then send the message. And then once it's sent, it should of course uh, redirect the form. And as you can see, we redirect it to the homepage. So that is the single form settings. Now we also have the global form settings as well. So this will be for all of your forms. So again, let's go to the form settings area. And in here you have, a, again, a number of options. So the first option is enable the email reminder. And again, this one is very useful if you would like to be notified if you have missed an email. It's also helpful uh, to find out if your form is not working. On occasions, uh, the email may potentially get blocked uh, by your email provider. And of course, that's not very useful for you. So the reminder will submit a message to you directly from WordPress and notify you that you have an unread entry. And of course, if you actually haven't received that email, you'll wanna check in with your hosting provider as to why the emails are not submitting. You'll then also have the option to enable an email as a plain text instead of HTML. That's generally useful if you're submitting the email to some sort of system that parses the information. Uh, maybe you are integrating with an, another service and you need to pass that information through and HTML is uh, plain text is required. Uh, generally, it's not the case, but uh, you may need that. Enable the reply to header. That is uh, to allow you to respond to the user's email. So once they submit their email and you have the reply to email option, whenever you click respond, you will automatically have their email in the reply to section of the email service that you're using. Now, this can cause issues as some email providers uh, do tend to block uh, emails that have a reply to header set as something different from the actual submission form. Um, so just be wary of that if you're having issues, turn off the reply to header and test your form and see if you're receiving it. When should you get the reminder email? You can set the days here. So one day, two days, three days, etc. We would recommend uh, one or two days. Um, I think after that, the lead may get a little cold. So of course, uh, try and keep that down to one to two days. Enter the email address that you would like to receive the reminder at. Uh, this can be a different email, of course, to the one that you had in the form, or of course, uh, the same as well, just so you can uh, get the email and notify you that there is an unread entry uh, saved here in the flow form section. We have the option to enable the captcha. And if you enable the captcha, you should generate your Google reCAPTCHA for the site. So once you click this, uh, it will then ask you to generate a key for you. And then with that key, you can add the items here and that will add a reCAPTCHA to your form and hopefully prevent spam on your site. Now again, this can get annoying for some users if they're submitting multiple forms on your site. So just be wary of using this, but again, it is a great way to block spam. You can use alternative options like honeypot method, and there are lots of plugins for that as well. So once you're done with everything, you can go ahead and hit save the options, and that will be the full forms settings completed and set up for your site. So that's it folks for this video. In the next video, I will show you how to add forms to your pages or posts.